Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get in and out of the Louvre in two hours, three hours, four hours, or more. If you're going to visit for one day only, be certain that the rooms you want to see are open. All rooms are open on the weekend, but the Northern European art and French small paintings are closed two days a week. Like most people, I've only visited the Louvre for one day each time I came to Paris. Last fall, I spent five full days at the Louvre to make a comprehensive film about the museum. As a result, I saw things I never would have seen had I just visited for one day. You can visit the Louvre like this or like this. Here is the pyramid. You want to avoid this entrance if you can, but more often than not, you will not be able to. Just make sure that you are on the correct line. Those with tickets or the museum pass can use the shorter line on the left. The first trick is to use the Richelieu entrance, the left of the main entrance. This is good for those with memberships and electronic tickets, though I have seen those with electronic tickets turned away. If you get there first thing, by nine, they often do not check. Also, this is the best exit. The other exit is under the carousel where they steer you to shop. Do try to avoid this. It's best to look at the Louvre as three separate museums. The Denon Wing, the Richelieu Wing, and the Sully Wing. Any one-day ticket allows three entries at any of the wings. So you can get a bite or a cup of coffee in between your visits to each wing. If you want to go back to the same wing, you will miss out on a different wing. Do note that you can get into the Sully Wing from the Richelieu Wing and vice versa. So if you want to take more breaks, under the pyramid, you can use this scheme. So tip number two, get there early. If you had to visit one museum at opening time, this would be the one. Naturally, have your museum pass or ticket in hand. If you want to see Our Lady of the Louvre, go to the Denon Wing and bear right up the stairs. You will get to a hallway with the Winged Victory on your right. To your left are the two Michelangelo slaves, including the Dying Slave. Behind you is Roman art. Ascend to the Winged Victory and make a right. To your left is the Apollo Gallery, which is closed through 2020. Here, during and after the current renovation, you will see two Botticelli frescoes and a Fra Angelico. Now gander upon the Grand Gallery, which is 1,500 feet long. In Godard's film, Band Apart, three students try to break the world record running through it. Now take your time. To your right is a room of international Gothic and early Renaissance art. If this is not your cup of tea, skip it. But do take a look at the left at the three Jados. This is where the Renaissance began. Move slowly up until the Mona Lisa room. This is to me one of the best parts of the museum. Go past the Mona Lisa room to see the Raphaels and stop when you see the Volterra, David slaying Goliath in the middle facing you. There is also a bathroom to your right. Unless you're keen on Baroque art, go no further. If you are, continue down to the Caravaggio's and then head back to the Mona Lisa room. There are a fair amount of Leonardo's outside this room, which have been temporarily moved to the Leonardo exhibition. Please see my film on this show. Stand in the airplane security line to see her and don't dismiss the art surrounding it especially The Wedding at Cana by Veronese behind you. After Mona, go behind her to see the fantastic pastoral concert by Titian, though I think it to be a Giorgione. It inspired many an artwork, not the least of which is Manet's Luncheon on the Grass across the river at the Dorsay. You emerge on the other side at great French historical paintings. They are not all historical, but they are all great. Here you will see the biggies the Raft of the Medusa, the Coronation of Napoleon, and Liberty Leading the People. Turn right to the Winged Victory and descend the stairs. Go straight ahead to the Michelangelo's at the far end. If your goal was a two-hour visit, you are done. You can now proudly say you visited the Louvre. If you wish to expand your visit to three hours and Italian Renaissance sculpture is your thing, go down the stairs behind the Michelangelo's. Then ascend the stairs to go where you came in. There's a fantastic collection of Roman sculptures right by the exit. Then go to the Sully Wing to see the Venus de Milo. Now you have a choice. You can look at more ancient Greek art or go upstairs to see the small French paintings 
such as Watteau, Chardin, Boucher, Fragonard, and Ang. This should put you at the three hour mark. You can, of course, go through the Mammoth Egypt collection, but be forewarned if you go in, it will take about two hours to get out. The same holds true for their Oriental section, which is really Middle Eastern art. Also, the myriad of French decorative art will be very time consuming as well. So if you wish to spend no more than four hours, I would recommend going to the Richelieu wing to see the Northern European art, such as Rembrandt, Van der Weyden, and Vermeer. This will put you at the four hour mark. If you want to spend more time, Greece and Egypt awaits, as does the art of Africa, Asia, Oceania, and Americas. There is also a fine collection of Islamic art, and at five or more hours, you don't have to rush. Last but not least is, naturally, the most comprehensive collection of French sculpture in the world. Have you ever wondered why there's not much French sculpture in museums? It's all here. Also, do think about going in the evening on Wednesdays and Fridays when the museum is much less crowded. Please visit my YouTube channel, Art and Travel by Dave, to explore the Louvre, Hermitage, Vatican, and some of the greatest museums in the world. Au revoir and have a great visit.